listeners, and welcome to another episode of Who Corner to Corner podcast. My name is Paul, and I'm joined, as always, by my good friend, Jeff. That's me. Hello, everyone. Hi, Jeff. How are you doing today, sir? Um, I'm good. I'm good, thanks. How are you? Fantastic. Yes, good. I'm very good. I'm in a really good mood today. Jeff, do you know why? Uh, well, I've got a good idea, but why don't you idea. tell people? Okay, so we, um, we are joined by... Um, one of our favourite TARDIS team members. We've already seen two-thirds of yep. this particular TARDIS team. We've met Colin Baker, the Sixth Doctor. We've spoken to Miranda Raisin, who plays Mrs. Constant Clark. And I am delighted, ladies and gentlemen, to ladies and gentlemen, to announce that we are now talking to the fabulous Lisa Greenwood, who plays Flip Jackson. Welcome to the hey. podcast, Lisa. Hello. Thank Whee. you. Hi. Hi guys. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Well, I just had a fringe cut and it's it's become a full time job trying to make it work. So that that is where I am at life right now. But <laughs> I'll, I'll master it soon. It's, it's looking good, though. You've, you've, it you've managed it well today. Yeah, that's it's good. Kind. I feel like you might be lying. But that's no, no. <laughs> oh, no, no. Believe me, honestly, I, 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 I haven't had my hair cut for about eight weeks now. It's actually since before Christmas. Yeah. It's the yeah. reason with the hat. I'll take he, it off. Anyway. Yeah, if he takes that off, it's just going to be hair everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it does. Yeah, I've actually started wearing this now in, uh, in my actual day job Zoom calls. And it's just part of the thing. So, like, Paul, you're wearing a hat, though. Yeah, yeah, I wear a hat. It's what I do now. You know, that's a I cool. love a hat. I love a hat. I've been living in a hat, actually. <laughs> Little caps. My yeah, friend Amy, um, she's actually in the Big Finish world as well, Amy Pemberton. Oh, yes. She's got this really beautiful hat, and she came around to see me a few months ago. And I wanted to copy her, so I went out and got the exact same hat. But mm. she looks cool, and I look like a little person that works on a train. <laughs> 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 I don't know if I've got the hat down here. It's like, a, you know, one of those big caps. At the front, yeah, she yeah, looks yeah. so nice in it, and it just didn't work for me. Oh no, <laughs> you got you got hat envy. Yeah, yeah, I did envy. massive hat envy. <laughs> okay, so um, Lisa, you've you, you've been a, a, away from things for a while. Ooh. You um, you you had COVID, which just kind of struck you from from nowhere. How, how are you mm. recovering from that? Are you kind of back in the game now. It's it's been a very very slow process. So. Mm. Oh, I don't even know where to start. When I caught COVID, I collapsed um, and I pretty much lost the ability to walk, oh, talk, stand. Um, and it was very early in the pandemic. So people didn't really know what it was. Mm. And, you know, I was young, fit and healthy beforehand. So, you know, I got a lot of doctors tell me that maybe I had anxiety. Um, but a year on or eight months on, we found out that I actually was suffering with blood clots and heart inflammation and stomach inflammation and all sorts of stuff. So from that point, it's been a process of trying to treat, manage, build mm. strength. Um, but it's been very, very difficult. But I am one of the lucky ones. You know, I didn't yeah. perish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Touch wood. Yeah. Touch wood. It's, you know, it's been it's been a process. The hardest thing is a complete change of lifestyle at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. And also working through those memories as well of not being able to walk and talk and being bed bound. It was horrific, oh really, goodness. really hard time. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I'm getting there. I'm trying to stay as positive as I can. Um, and yeah, I'm seeing friends a lot more now. Um, Brilliant. My agent's eager to send me auditions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that, that's, that's you good. Know, yeah, I've not, yeah. um, not got the ring light out yet. So I don't know. <laughs> I feel a little bit reluctant at the moment. Um, but yeah, time will tell. It's it's a weird thing. I've never had this much time away from acting. Yeah. Um, so when I got my first script back, I was just a bit like, oh my God, I don't know if I one know how to do this anymore. Yeah. Or yeah. 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 Just, what am I supposed to do with this bit of paper? What you know? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it was it was very strange, very strange yeah. experience as well, because a lot of things are self-taped now. Yeah. Um, yeah. because I missed the whole pandemic thing, didn't I? Because I was mm. unwell during yeah. it and Oh. And the actor has now gone to the self tape world. <laughs> he was like, "What? I have to set everything up myself and have to it myself." Like, what? These are skills I've not learned. So. Uh, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we, we spoke to that, yeah. we, we spoke to a lot of people who set up little recording studios in their in their brew cupboards, in their yeah. airing cupboards, in in the bottom of their wardrobes. <laughs> <It's never laughs> yeah. I go back to Amy as well. Amy said to yeah. me, um, "She needs to help me with a setup because I'm currently resting you on a candle." <laughs> but I know. <laughs> A lot of people have proper setups and mics and things like that. So yeah, yeah. I, yeah, know, I will get back to it. Sound rooms in. 
Uh, du- du- uh, duvets hanging up in their uh, in their cupboards and stuff, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so it is. slightly soundproofed, you know. Yeah. You're leaning on a vase, resting on a candle next to a cup of coffee. <laughs> well, that's a pretty good that's setup pro- to be in, really. You know? yeah. exactly. It is. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, you know, wish you the, the best of, of health yeah. and everything. And, you know, getting through that, it must have been it must have been something. But just want to let you know as well, since we told people that you were joining us on the podcast, we've had a lot of fans and followers kind of. Uh, you know ask us to put forward their their well wishes for you and yeah you know sort of wish you the best of health and and it's so glad that you're you're back in the world of doctor who yeah and ready to continue playing flip jackson because um it was kind of left on a bit of a cliffhanger wasn't it (laughs) it was yeah (laughs) i mean yeah just want to say i have seen a lot of the messages Mm. and i do try to respond where i can but i think where the last couple of years i've been googling a lot of you know, how do I get better from blood clots? And how do I do yeah, this? My yeah. algorithm is very medical at the moment mm. on social media. <laughs> so I do also find it very triggering going on there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, tons of lovely messages, people that I've met at conventions yeah. from across the pond, sending me emails and stuff. Um, and it's really kind. Like whenever I feel like I need a little lift, mm. I'll go on and I'll be like, what's, what's everyone doing? Yeah, what's yeah, Doctor Who yeah, was? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. you know, it feels good. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's been really nice. You know, people were, you know, concerned and, mm. you know, for you. And, yeah. you know, when, like Paul said, when we said we, we were chatting with you, you know, they wanted to pass on their best and they were pleased to see that you were sort of getting active again and, and you know, feeling better in yourself. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's really nice. You know, it's, it's a good community and, you know, people obviously, yeah. you know, they, they like you and they, and they care. So I, I thought that was really nice to yeah. see. It's an amazing community. And I would say I'm not out of the woods yet. Yeah. Mm. Um, but I'm hopefully getting there. You know, long COVID is very, very misunderstood um, at the moment. And the clotting issues is something people are struggling struggling with to try and treat. Mm. Um, but I just, I feel like a lot of things are getting better. But one of the things I need to really mm. improve on is my energy. Yeah. My energy can sometimes feel a bit weak. Um, and that's one reason why, you know, there has been talks about me coming back to play Flip. But I want to come back when I can give the full energy I can give yeah. to that character, mm. you know, because she is a very big character. Yeah. Um, yeah. And she gets a lot of lines. Yeah. <laughs> she does. <laughs> you know, I, don't, I don't get a break in that studio, guys. They work really hard. Um, so I need to make sure that I have the energy because I feel like I do a bad job, yeah. you know. And yeah. I know that everyone yeah. at home won't see that. And they won't but feel you, but that. But you feel it. But, but you know, you know it you in could, yourself. Yeah. You? Yeah. yeah. That's the yeah. perfectionism in me. And that's something mm. that I really have had to try and work on, especially over getting ill, because I can't do things yeah. at the level that I'd want to do them. Right. So I need to check that perfectionism. Um, because in acting as well, it can be quite detrimental to your um, performance and your mental mm. health. You yeah. know, if you feel like you never have done a good job or you wish you could have done things better. And really, no one else sees that. It's just the, the yeah. things you well, yeah, that's that's one of the things when you do something creative, isn't it? You mm-hmm. know, you, you put yeah. yourself at this uh, self self expectation, and, and mm. you know, probably you, you're always hitting it, you know, and and for, for the audience, and they'd be happy and they think it's all great and everything. But yeah, if you kind yeah. of go away thinking, you know, what well, I could have done better there, it sort of nags at you a little bit, doesn't it? One hundred percent. And I feel like it's probably not only creative industries I can't be alone I think it's a lot of people may feel like that um and it might be down to social media you know you see everyone having the best life ever and yeah. mm. succeeding in their work and booking 75 acting jobs you know <laughs> um yeah so it might yeah. be other people as well it, it might not be just me I don't know what do you no, think it's, it, there, no, there, there no. Is, it's it what what you need to do is 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 retrain your brain so exactly. when you're looking at something, a piece of work that you've done or stuff you're doing during the day, and you're focusing on the negatives more than the positive stuff, you mm. need to kind of flip it around, so to speak. Yeah, so you, no you pun intended. Yeah, no, yeah. Indeed. <laughs> so you train yourself to look at the positive stuff. And whereas mm. sometimes that can feel uncomfortable because it's like, you know, well, I'm blowing my own trumpet because I'm looking at this and I think I'm great here and I'm great there. Actually, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's building self-esteem. It's building, you know, the, the value of the work you've done in your 
own mind. And they're still going to, you know, those negative things are still going to be there. But because you're focusing on the positive stuff, that mm-hmm. now reinforces your self belief and your yeah. it builds your self esteem yeah. and gives you the energy to move forward. That's the theory. It does it's work. Funny you, it's funny you mention that because, especially with um, what I've gone through the mm. last couple of years, I've had to pick myself up yeah. constantly. You know, I have to, there were one point that I couldn't stand in the shower. Um, but I had to keep trying to get there, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and I started looking into something called brain brain retraining mm. and the effect it has on something called the amygdala um, yeah. and the nervous system and how yeah, you can yeah. rewire the brain. Um, not always in medical issues, obviously, because mm. medical issues are medical issues, but thought patterns. Yeah, exactly um, that. So, yeah. yeah. So if you go down a negative thought pattern like, oh, you know, I'm worried about doing this job. I'm not good enough for this job. Yeah. You have to try and stop it in its tracks. You do. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. self-defeating. Yeah. And if yeah. that yeah. becomes the habit, it's going to be more difficult to break out of it. Yeah. So it's yeah. learning the new habit and reinforcing each time. And it does feel strange initially, but when it becomes the habit, it's it's mm. your day-to-day. And, you know, it, it can make you, you know, it's not just the, the physical things. It's like you would, yeah. you would physically retrain your body to do something. You know what I mean? Like, if, you know, it's if, the brain as well. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's not that different yeah. in that way. Yeah. yeah. And that is a plus actually that I'm taking from mm. all of this as that's happened because I was in a pattern with a lot of things in life. Yeah. Um, and what is it? High functioning. I don't know if I had high functioning anxiety, right? So you never, I never yeah, realized yeah, that yeah. I had it, but I was yeah. always on the go. And having to stop has made me realize that that pattern that I was in wasn't particularly healthy so if anything yeah. good comes out of what's happened over the last mm. couple of years I'll take that you know yeah. and yeah. hopefully it can lead Definitely. me on a better better path yeah. it will lead you on a yes. better path I that's hope a... so I feel like a different person completely. oh brilliant yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's good yeah and and you yeah. you know despite the the difficulties and what's happened mm. you know you clearly positive and you, you know you've learned from it and I you know, try I yeah. try. I have my moments. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm sure. Yeah. To... Oh yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't want anyone to watch this and think, "Oh my God, look at her!" Like, I'm not like as good as that in a sense. Um, so I'm going to be honest. I have my moments. You know, mm. I am upset some days. Some days yeah. it all just yeah. gets to me yeah. that I'm still not at the level that I want to be. Mm. Um, and I think it's important to talk about that as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, because you know, life's not all good all the time. You do have yeah. these. Mm. these harder moments as well and this is the first time in life I've really had to have hard moments you know um so I thought you know I'll share them I'll yeah share no, them I, I think it's good you know I've, I've been following you on on Twitter and your updates from time to time and yeah. you know what you've been going through and things and you know I, I think and anything like this or you know any kind of you know taboo subject you mm. know what I mean it's this isn't mm. necessarily taboo but you know hopefully you know what I mean but it's good it's to talk about subject. it it's a difficult mm. subject because there's going to be other people out there who've gone yeah. through the same thing or you know might be able to take the, the some inspiration from the way you've dealt with it and apply that to what they're going through yeah. and, you know so yeah I, no, I think, exactly and as yeah. well with long covid it affected everyone mm. differently so someone might have a cold yeah. with it um and me i had heart inflammation stomach inflammation blood clots and couldn't That's get out of bed for the yeah. best part of the year mm-hmm. you know but um i think it's good to break down those subjects mm. to make people more aware of what can happen and like yeah. i said hopefully i'm on the i'm going to keep yeah. striving yeah. to to go upwards yeah come a long way from where i was but mm. yeah i think it's important to talk about yeah isn't it funny how differently it, it affected everyone you know that's a lot when I got it mm. so like one of my uh twin uh girls she was three and a half and she got it absolutely wiped out and then I got it at the same time and I sort of you know had to keep blowing my nose and stuff but then in the afternoons I'd be absolutely exhausted mm. and I was like this is ridiculous I'm just sitting here with with Ella watching tv but I, I want to go to sleep like I really need to do it you're fighting it yeah and then when my wife got it you know I I said I don't understand you don't seem to have any symptoms she said my legs are tingly (laughs) and that was what she had was that yeah Yeah. no no blowing the nose no cough nothing and and then you know I've you know met other people who've had it and Mm. you know they've had bad headaches or they've been in bed for a week and stuff like that it's so strange how everyone has you know these different affected things. differently yeah i mean that's a million dollar question i hope mm. um i mean you didn't ask a question there i don't that was my question <laughs> in my head so this is something i do as well um invent questions <laughs> invent questions 
<laughs> uh, I've, I've, now I forgot the question. Never mind, carry oh. on. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, I was going to say, sorry guys, I was just going to say, if we can figure out a way to treat it. Yeah. Um, but it's, like you say, it's difficult because it affects everyone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's, yeah, yeah it's a, that is the million dollar question, yeah. how to well, treat it. it is, yeah. <laughs> and it's it's like they've been saying, we have to kind of live with it now, don't we? I mean, mm. great, we, we, we've now got some vaccines for it and we've got the programme and everything else, which is which is good. Um, but it's yeah, just another, another thing that's going to, that's going to affect us. Yeah. In in our daily life, you know, from you know, on a on a scale that ranges from almost zero to like a million. And it's yeah. where in that scale are you going to be? You just don't know until yeah. until it hits. But shall we shall shall we talk about Doctor Who? Move on to a, yes. a, a happier yeah. subject. So of uh, course. Th- thanks for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. No, yeah. thank you for letting me share that. It can be a um a difficult subject that not everyone wants to hear about or talk about. Yeah. So mm. it's yeah, thanks for giving me the time. Yeah, no, ab- absolutely. Yeah, You're welcome. So we've got a whole bunch of questions from our yes. f- followers and our and, listeners. And, Jeff. Our, and our own brains as well. And our own brains. Yeah. Well, um, yes. Yeah, you, more Jeff's you, brain you decide actually. which are the best <laughs> questions. I, I added a question to it. Jeff sent it to me. And I went, oh, yeah, I'll stick one in there. And I didn't actually tell you which one that was, but I've had yeah. it written down in my pink pen on my question sheet. So if it comes up, I shall ask it. Right. OK, <laughs> let's go then. All right, so let's let's kick this off, Lisa. Tell us, uh, for, for anyone listening who doesn't know, tell us who Flip Jackson is. So Flip Jackson is um, the sixth Doctor's companion, and the sixth Doctor, of course, is played by Colin Baker. Wonderful. Yeah. And I've played her, oh my gosh, I actually can't remember how many years now, but it's been, I believe, over a decade. Yeah, um, yeah it's been quite a while, going, hasn't it? Yeah, wow. like I, I remember being very fresh faced and, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got my first grade the other day, so I'm just, uh, that, that's how oh, I'm wait. in. Yeah. It's another reason I wear the hat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been a very, very long time and Colin's the only one I've ever worked with. He's the only doctor I've ever worked with. Yeah. But yeah, that's Flip. She's a East End girl, a bit like me. And the first time we ever met her was... She was working behind a cheese counter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can relate to that. Really I've done fun. That supermarket. Yeah. Oh, yeah. nice. I worked in Debenhams many moons ago. <laughs> yeah, if, if so any, I know what it's like. anyone when listening, there was a yeah, when there was a Debenhams. Yeah. 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 Debenhams was Showing a department store. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Flip, so Flip began life behind a cheese counter, then weighing way out cheese and uh, bits of Wensleydale and cheddar and and, yeah. brie and everything yeah. else. Yeah. And she, well, and she I wasn't was... the assistant. I wasn't the assistant mm. first Look, of all. It was, yeah. Please, it, it was yeah. a one-off, wasn't it, uh, initially? It was. And, um, uh, was Flip engaged at that point in, in the storyline, or was it? Did that oh my gosh, later? you're testing. You're testing. From a my decade ago knowledge. now. <laughs> <laughs> all, all I know is she's not engaged anymore. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> Oh, did she get married? Oh my god, it all blends in. <laughs> she, she did. She did have her. There was the wedding, uh, and the, and she was at the reception, and then the. Um, she brought off, didn't she? Yeah, the portal thing appeared, and it took her back to the to the alien uh, stuff happened forties, where she was reunited with with the Doctor and Mrs. Clark. Yeah, uh, oh my god, but had... I, I can't remember what where it went after that. For, forgive me, uh, whether, but yeah, I don't think she ended up. You know, properly getting married. Actually, getting she was married. On the yeah. Run. yeah on but the yeah, run. my first um, well, the first big finish job I ever did was one of my mm. first acting jobs. Was it really? I'd oh, never was it? Do- yeah, yeah. I'd never done really anything before. I did a um a government drugs campaign, which mm. was weird. I did that one job where I was right. like. Take the drugs. I don't know why I was... Take the drugs. Is it? Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> inverse messaging. I, I thought it I was going to be one was... of those say no to drugs. Yeah. No, say no. Take the drugs. <laughs> that person. I thought, I don't know what made people look like I could be that person. And there was the good person and the bad person. Yeah. And I was like, take the drugs. And the other person was like, don't take the drugs. I've got it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then obviously they went down the good path, which was yeah, you know, yeah, the, right yeah. Thing to do. the right way. Yeah. Um, yes. And then um, I got the call to go down to Big Finish and I was really mm. nervous. And the script came. And obviously, because it's audio, it was the biggest thing I'd ever seen in my life. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But I didn't want to ask my agent if yeah. I just had to read my part or learn the whole thing. So right. me being a perfectionist, <laughs> read all of it. I, uh, I read all of it. <laughs> yeah. I learned everyone's lines, the doctors. Oh, my goodness. Everyone's. Wow. I know. Yeah. That's dedication. Um, yeah. 
yeah I mean a bit too much if I'm gonna uh, say that yeah um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um, if, if... And yeah it was great it, it was great fun we went down there um I was in booth six I remember being very nervous yeah. and there's a little hole in booth six and I could just about see well, where they serve you food through, is that? Is that <laughs> yeah. yeah, the, the legendary <laughs> big game. finish lunch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just Slide a little down. bit of their lunch yeah. first. Yeah. <laughs> Under the door. <laughs> they lock you in. Yeah. Um, to my left, I saw... <laughs> <laughs> to my left, I saw Maggie. And then to my right, oh, yeah. I saw yeah. Colin. Yeah, um, stables. And it was only a few lines. It was only a few lines. Maggie yeah. was lovely. Yeah. Was really, really kind um, and soft. And yeah, it was my first introduction to Big Finish. Yeah, oh, wow. and, and then it led to more after that. So yeah. when we spoke to Miranda, she said that it's quite sort of theatre in a way with, with the, the their kind of you mm. know cast. And if they like someone, you know, when they've done a smallish part, you know, they'll, they'll often bring them back for more because that's what happened with her. You know, a bit bit like you. You know, as you probably know, she did a couple of other stories and then was asked to you know become Mrs. Clark. Yeah. So, you know, how did it go when they, you know, gave you the call to say they wanted you to come back? How, how did that all happen? I was very excited. It was obviously at the start of my acting journey. Like mm. I hadn't really done a lot of things and they they um asked me to come back and be a regular. And I just thought, yeah, this is great. This is really, really yeah. great. Um, and I slowly learned that you don't have to obviously memorise the whole script. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which made life a lot, a lot easier for me. Yeah. Um, but I got put into booth one mm. and to the left of me was Colin. Yeah. And to the right of me was the production team, the directors. So it became more of a collaborative approach. You know, yeah, I could yeah, act on yeah. Colin, mm. get the notes from the directors. And it, yeah, it, that was the difference, I think. The and, main and, what, difference. and what a lovely thing for, for you as an actress to, you know, have done that kind of small role and have impressed yeah. them that much that, you know, that they asked you to come back and be a regular. You know, it's, it's the kind yeah. of thing like, you know any actor mm. you know wants isn't it to get a recurring role or like you know for me as a as a you know regular you know, income Jeff. yeah to be you know as a videographer <laughs> that's to get, what we all know, need <laughs> repeat jobs and stuff you know so yes yeah, that's i think that's fantastic that uh you know they asked you back like mm. that definitely it was really yeah. surreal as well i remember mm. they um invited me to one of the first ever conventions like i didn't even know what convention was right, right. i don't right. i didn't know anything really um i'd watched an a little bit of Doctor Who, but only um, David Tennant's season. Yeah. So I've mm. never seen anything really before that. Right. Um, and I remember I was waiting behind the doors. I had no idea what was going on. And it might have been Jason, Hey Gallery. Okay. And she yeah. said something like, Welcome, Lisa Greenwood. And hey. I opened the door. And there was like loads of people there. And they started clapping. And I had to walk yeah. down the centre of this aisle. <laughs> what is happening? Was it, was it quite nervous then? Was it, uh, like, did you expect that? had time to be nervous i was yeah. just mega confused <laughs> probably a bit a bit of a deer in headlights moment yeah um, yeah, yeah yeah just like what like i didn't realize i was going to be on stage yeah. having right. a chat with everyone and <laughs> <laughs> i thought i was there just to wave you know yeah, it's, it's brought me to wave yeah <laughs> yeah wave in the background but no it was a shock to the system oh wow so when you uh started um you know playing flip like you said you didn't hadn't really watched much who so mm. did that make it easier in some ways for you to not have a sort of you know like imagine if, if Paul or I went in to do it like I think that's Paul's dream to do Big Finish with his, <laughs> his, his voice range but to go yeah. in and, and oh my god you know it's the sixth doctor you know you'd be quite nervous so did, did you not have that you know to, I didn't I didn't have any nerves um but I've never really been nervous around mm. actors and mm. things like that interestingly the only person I've ever got nervous around um was I know I've forgotten her name what the hell <laughs> uh, she's one of my favorite actor actresses from only um we'll come back to it okay Abfab Abfab oh, Jennifer yeah. Saunders she's my favorite person in the whole Jennifer, world so the yeah, only, yeah, yeah. She, she's the, the only person I ever got a bit starstruck around but yeah, it was mm. it was good not having all that background knowledge mm. and how huge the the show was, because I think it could have got in my head at yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I just felt very free with it. It was very exciting. Yeah, the scripts were right. brilliantly written. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So you see them in your head. You know what I mean. So you don't have to worry about yeah. even acting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because mm. it's it's all in the voice and 
yeah, I didn't feel very nervous at all, really. Oh, that's good. And and yeah. how was how was it or how is it working with Colin when we chatted to him on the podcast? He, he was absolutely yeah. brilliant. He and, was. Uh, yeah, he he did the show intro for us because Paul, you you stumbled slightly, didn't you? See, when you're talking about nerves, there, <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about 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 Colin when we had him on the podcast, and I think that was that was the first time I really really felt nervous because yeah. I'm talking to the doctor, yeah. you know, yeah. a doctor that I kind of grew up with way back in yeah. way back because I'm that old, right? So, <laughs> he, you know, he really like, he really is, <laughs> and it is it's a weird thing where sometimes the, the you know the fictional persona can become so huge and so massive mm. that it kind of does overshadow something and I hadn't expected it actually to, you know to sort of I mean I stumbled my words anyway but I hadn't expected to yeah. feel quite so nervous and then Colin put me straight at ease by saying yeah, I hate yeah. nervous people yeah so like, oh, thanks, Colin. <laughs> and, it, and you know he was he was just brilliant the chat brilliant and, Jesus, you know, laugh on you mate Is that yeah, laugh, was, it? You know I mean? and, yeah. and we talked for longer than we kind of thought we would we and, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. we had a really good time so oh he's a talker <laughs> yeah yeah he's a talker. yeah you get some good conversations out of Colin yeah. which is great for a podcast that's yeah it was really good yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what, yeah, what we don't want is a is a non-talker. So how are yeah. you getting on there with your latest project? That's all right. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've never had you that, know when actually. Colin's arrived, you you hear yes, him before really. you see him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. can I can imagine. He's got well, actually, kind of, kind of like all the the doctors, really. He's got quite an identifiable voice, isn't he? You know, oh, yes. it's a brilliant. Yeah, yeah. it's wonderful. It's, yeah. it's a brilliant voice for radio. It's yeah. so. Like it just fills the room. Mm, yeah, bang in as well. Like a little bit gravelly as well. You know, mm. it's, it's got a nice, nice tone to it. Mm. So, yeah. if, since you got uh, the role of Flip, did, have you watched much Doctor Who? You know, did, did you kind of? Yeah, catch I up went with through the, a stage. The, you know? Yeah, definitely. So, obviously, when I got the the role, I was watching it quite religiously, um, and then I've I've stopped way back. To be honest, that I think you're going to be shocked, but the last season that I may have watched was Peter Capaldi okay, okay. now yeah, yeah. yeah so we're, we're a few episodes in now I've got a reason for the last two years I've not really been watching anything mm. yeah, um, yeah yeah we'll let you off from, there yeah <laughs> <laughs> apart from things that I've watched before which is really really weird but I read somewhere that it brings up your um mm. your dopamine levels oh uh, yes yeah I, I just read an article so mm. I'm like religiously watching buff yeah. going around pretending I'm some sort of vampire player <laughs> um but yeah Peter Capaldi and then I've yeah. jumped in and out you know yeah, I've yeah, watched yeah, an episode yeah. here but this is the best time for me to catch up now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. have yeah. you have you gone yeah. back and watched any of Colin's stories on on TV have you watched those yet I've seen a lot of it on YouTube yeah um he's brilliant it, yeah. it's a completely different era isn't it yeah, yeah and yeah. whenever Colin's in something new as well I'll, I'll always watch that so yes. I saw him in Doctors oh yes I think yes. I was, I watched him on Pointless when it came yeah, out. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that actually. <laughs> I would have seen that. Yeah. He he did um towards the end of last year he did a uh theatre tour for like a Oh Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, that? right, like mm-hmm. a radio play version of um Hound of the Baskervilles. <clears throat> so um I, we got invited, didn't we, Paul? You couldn't make it to any of the shows that, that were near you. You, you went, keep bringing that up, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, so I went, Paul didn't. <laughs> uh and uh unfortunately so I didn't get I to went, go and yeah. Didn't get to go and see him or anything, but uh, it was it was great. It was kind of like Big Finish live in yeah. a way, really. You know, they had someone making sound effects and they all got up and did their bits on the mic and stuff. So yeah. it, was, it was really good. Yeah, it was, it was good. No, I couldn't but, have asked for a better mm, person to be paired with. You know, great. I was very yeah. new into it, and he's very um, experienced yeah. in that world. So to have and be under someone's wing like Colin, I think, was yeah. a great great opportunity for me. Yeah. Mm. So, um, like we said earlier, things with Flip were sort of left in a bit of a cliffhanger, weren't they? Kind of yeah. off, off screen, off off air. So, do you know if there's plans for you to? That's that's what the other big question is: uh, when yeah. when might you come back? And you know, do you know what's what's going on? And yeah, I mean, like I said, I've had a few messages um, mm. from the team saying you have to come back and do a bit. You know, would you would you like to come into the studio? And it it just has to be at a point where I feel like I'm ready to be on my feet and to give that much energy. Um, But as well, we can do a setup at home. That's a great thing about audio. So we can we can make it work. Mm. Um, And I know they're they're probably itching to to get a script out, and I am as well. So yeah, yeah. yeah, (laughs) Watch this space. Yeah, great. I I I love the um the the genuinely you 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 three are my favourite kind of big finish you know team and and I love the uh 
you know, the the relationship you, you have with Constance, you know, the way yeah. Flip calls her Connie and she's like... Yeah. It's, it's, it's a nice counterpoint, isn't it? Yeah. To that kind of um, 1940s, slightly middle to upper class kind of uh, received yeah. pronunciation. Yeah, and yeah. Very proper in her values. I mean, she's a great heroine, but she's also quite... She maintains her status. Yes, it's well, Mrs. Clark the whole time, but she, she obviously... Yeah. Like Whereas, and, and flips like yeah. I don't care about any of that. Uh, exactly. Going, yeah. Bang, 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 <laughs> straight yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know. Yeah. <laughs> straight through. I know. Yeah. She's a bit full on. Like yeah, I, yeah. I imagine yeah. what it's like being Flip's friend. You know, <laughs> yeah. I couldn't keep I up. Feel like, <laughs> no, I feel like you need good health insurance being mm. Flip's friend. Like you'd get into <laughs> some really tricky situation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, could, yeah. I could yeah. imagine her. Um, you know, Saturday night out would involve, you know, climbing walls and, you know, do, doing, you know, crazy, <laughs> crazy, crazy stuff. stuff. Crazy yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah, it'd be a lot of crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah I must admit, actually, because I've only recently, um, I mean, I've been I've been sort of in and out of Big Finish for, for many years since they started. But um, I, I kind of lost the way a little bit with the, the sort of month with all the releases that were coming through. And Jeff go. actually got me back into the Colin Baker range and specifically the stories with you and Miranda Rayson as well. And I must say, I they are very, very good. Yeah, they are really yeah, good. I, yeah. It's astonishingly good. So what I want to do now is actually go back to the start of Flip Store because I've, I've, I've listened to them piecemeal. So I don't know if yeah. they particularly follow on one from the other. If there's like an ongoing story, yeah, but... there's there's not so much an ongoing story, but there is. So you the can just kind of dip in. Yeah, you know the characters have kind of mm. arcs, don't we they? We have a plane going across. I don't know if you can hear that. It's we like, can't you know... hear that. We'd no, never have known no. it was there unless no. you mentioned it. We're listening for it. <laughs> oh no! It sounds like the loudest plane ever. That's right. Actually, I, I get military planes over here. They can yes, be you, really you do, yeah. So yeah. hang on to yeah. everything. Whoa! <laughs> so no, we've... we have been very blessed with the writers. Um, yeah. Obviously, Johnny has done a lot for us. He created yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I always enjoy Chris Chapman, Matt Fitton. Like we yeah. really, I don't want to miss anyone out to be honest. Um, <laughs> but there's there's a few great writers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, 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 like, they've got a good pool of talent there. Yeah, they really do. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. So I've got a couple of questions here from uh, well, one from Twitter and one from uh, Gallifrey Base, which is Big Doctor Who forum that, that you might have heard of. So um, at vinyl underscore librarian on Twitter asks, what other doctor would you love to have flip play opposite? Ooh. Oh, my gosh, that's a tough one. Um, because I've actually met a few of them and had some mm. really great memories with a lot of them. Um, one, there's... Oh gosh, actually. <laughs> oh no, it's a tough question. One um who I think is great is Sylvester McCoy. Oh um, yeah, I love Sylvester. Just because I love him as a person, mm. right? I think he's a really fun person. I can tell you a funny story actually, how I how I kind of first met Sylvester. Please, so yeah. yeah, yeah. We was um doing a convention abroad mm. somewhere and there was like a typical American bar, right? And so I ended up walking into the bar and I saw Sylvester up there on the bar. And I was like, hey, you're right. And he was like, yeah, sit down. Let's have a drink. So I was like, okay. Yeah. Bearing in mind, I'm not a big drinker. I drink, you know, with a posh steak, I have a lemonade. Like, I'm not <laughs> I'm not a red wine type of girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he gets me a whiskey, right? <laughs> and I've never drunk whiskey in my life, right? But it's I'm trying quite, to play it cool. Quite strong, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd say this my strong. I'm trying to play it cool. Because yeah. he's Scottish. I'm half yeah. Scottish. I'm like, if you right. can do it, I can do it. I've got it in me to drink whiskey. Anyway, <laughs> it burnt my that. nose hairs, my esophagus. <laughs> it felt like it burnt my entire stomach. <laughs> And I couldn't finish it off. And then, um, yeah, he picked it up and finished it off. <laughs> off it goes, yeah. <laughs> and after that, we, we were friends the whole convention. Uh, oh, That's fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, oh, my God, I've got another story as well. Please, share. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we went to um, the House of Blues, which is a fancy mm. restaurant in America where they play, like, really blues music and jazz. And Oh, sweet, yeah. Yeah, and before I knew it, I turned around. And Sylvester was on stage, right? Just <laughs> randomly, like this, just randomly, randomly on stage. He's there. Well, there's a stage. I'm going for it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Brilliant. And he was up there yeah. with like the, the saxophone player and the singer, and he yeah. was swinging his walking cane around his head. <laughs> was he? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's always a fun night out with Sylvester. Yeah, so, I can uh, imagine. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, I feel like he's the doctor I think that I'd want to team up with because I think we've yeah. had a good time. Yeah, that he's, he's, good. he's very physical, isn't he? Or, mm. or, you know, as much as he can be <sighs> nowadays. But it's, he, he, I mean, he, that's what he used to do was lots and lots of physical comedy yeah. or torture, yeah. I think, as most of us would call it, driving six inch nails up his nose. And <laughs> yeah. And, and, <laughs> I went to, um, I, was, mm. so I went to one of the conventions in London last year in February, I think it was. And uh, Sylvester was, was there mm. and he, he did a mm. talk as well and uh it was it, it was so funny he obviously that the guy asking the questions wasn't kind of stimulating it enough so so, so Sylv just kind of was like it took ownership that yeah he just basically stood up and started yeah. you know picking out people from the audience of questions and just kind of, kind of leading it and the guy sat yeah. there went well, you know and uh, it was just it was just really <laughs> funny the way he, you know he, he took charge of it like that but yeah I think yeah flipping the seventh doctor that that would be really good mm. I think they'd have some good banter together and you I feel know. like it'd be a bit of an explosion yes um, yeah yeah and the other one, maybe I'd like to work again, would be. Um, ooh. Ooh. ooh, Peter Capaldi. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I've worked with him in the past and I just Have thought you? he was mm. an incredible actor. Um, it was on a show many moons ago called The Hour, and he gave me some amazing acting tips that I've never really forgotten. And um, he also had this incredible talent of rocking mm. up to set. And learning his lines on the day. Really? Now I don't know how yeah. you do that. No. Like, but he'd like take the lines, he'd learn them, and it'd be like the best performance ever. Um, yeah. he's wow. so talented, he's so composed, and um, it was just before he got Doctor Who actually. Right, that we okay. together. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, we're we're waiting for him to join Big Finish. He he hasn't done it yet. Hey, he's he's got to come on our podcast first, mate. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll have, to, we'll have to drop his agent an email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I've got a question from Cicero one two three on Gallifrey Base, who says, "What has been the f- Ooh, your, yes. your favourite story that you've done for Big Finish?" There's a question. Like all, yeah, I feel like it's always the same one. Um, but I really, really enjoyed it, and it was called the Middle. Yeah. Um. I think it was by Chris Chapman, but I'd have to go back and double check. Mm. And it was just this idea of that the young live on this planet called Formica and they have fun and they do whatever they want and they have no responsibility. But when they get old, they get shoved off to work and to die. It was a really really weird storyline, but it was the one that I thought could transition over to TV. Right. so I just imagined that really, and I just—it was a really fun one to play. It was me, Colin, and uh, Constance. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was really good fun that one. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, so uh, Paul, have you got any more uh, Doctor Who related questions? I do. Do not, Sorry, okay. I. I was just checking who did write that. It was Chris Chapman. You're quite right. Yes, we, we just did a little it. fact check over we, over. <laughs> over on my other screen so what what sort of um preparation do, do you do any sort of preparation processes for getting into the zone of flip for changing from from lisa to flip anything, and, and anything yes. that you do? with your like with your line learning as well because mm. you said you know you you learned that first script and then mm. after you recorded and then when you went back did you take a different approach to the scripts <laughs> yeah definitely um so what i would normally do now is i read through the whole script mm. But any script, any um, scene that I'm not in, I would take out and put to the side. I'd still take Ah. it with me, um, but I only have my scenes. Um, And then obviously I'd highlight my lines and read them through Mm. and perform them at home like I would in the booth. And I'd leave side notes on the side. So if we're ramping up to a comedy moment for Flip, I need to know that we're going to get there. So I need to try and you know, find a way to make it funny. Step, step yeah. into that, like, by yeah, grades, yeah, so mm. I do that. Um, and also, if there's any lines that I don't think Flip would say, um, I just gently yeah, <laughs> express so. that to the writer. And say, <laughs> I don't know if that, that's something Flip yeah. would say, you know. <laughs> I think there was one that was like, cool, blimey, governor. And I was like, we're pushing oh, it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, that's we're a little bit, <laughs> bit far there, yeah. So it's somebody else's <laughs> idea of what a cockney is, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh the funny thing mm-hmm. is, is I am I am Cockney, right? So yep. I grew up in that area. And mm. One of this is so funny. I remember getting a comment, and someone was like that yeah. Mockney accent. I did a fake <laughs> Cockney accent, and I was like, oh, actually, actually, that, <laughs> that was my accent back in the day. It has softened so yeah. much. Yeah. 
well, I say that you probably don't think it has, but no, it's I'm still straight. There. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Imagine what I was like ten years ago. It was very, very wow. strong. So I tried to get yeah. back to that and try not to soften my words or, you know, use very mm. big words. Yeah, I love flip, but I try to bring it down a little. Bit yeah, that's yeah. that's nice. The you, accent stronger. Yeah, and and you've got sort of a, a an ownership of her there, and you know, want it mm. to be represented properly and you know kind of keep it you know in the truth of who she there. is yeah yeah really i mean good. the writers are really good at that as well um yeah they seem to take johnny's idea and just go with it mm. um and they are very good at letting us jump in and say if there's something yeah. we want to change so yeah we can keep it on the right road yeah, mm. that's really mm. good um, so I've got a question here from uh, at Hughes JG on Twitter, uh, and he says, "What do you look most look forward to doing work-wise now that you're getting getting better on the, the road to recovery?" So absolutely no medical dramas. <laughs> <laughs> no. Stay I've away from casualty. <laughs> yeah, I've ticked them all off. Um, I've ticked casualty off and all of those yeah. ones. So I don't think I need to go back just yet. Um, just something really fun, maybe a comedy, yeah. a really yeah, a light good, yeah. comedy, um, or something totally different. Like one of my favourite films is The Fifth Element. Yeah. Um, oh yes, well done. I'm yeah. obsessed, obsessed. Mm. Um, so something you know like that would be really fun, yeah. just totally different, kind of wacky, and, surreal, almost. Yes. And just yeah. totally OTT, even isn't it? I think definitely some yeah. maybe down those two routes, um, okay. but nothing yeah. too true life, nothing too medical. Yeah, just, just I'm sure I'll go back fun. to that. But... Yeah, yeah, not yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean, I, obviously, we're, we're, you know, we, we're, this is a podcast based on a on a sci-fi show because we we love it and we do like our sort of fantasy and sci-fi stuff as well. Do we not, Jeff? We and, do indeed. Uh, yeah, but you know, I, I, there's, there's, I mean, I love the real world stuff as well. I've got all my classics over there, and the rest of it is all the the sci-fi stuff. But you know, I kind of think that if it wasn't for all this sci-fi stuff you know you can i think sometimes we just need that outlet yeah in whatever mm. way it manifests and for some people it's, it's different things and you know I, I do get kind of annoyed when a lot of um people in certain industries sort of look down yeah on this sort of stuff you know well it's mm. not highbrow it's um you know it's not dickens and it's not yeah, shakespeare I, th- I think it doesn't have to be no you know? but, but it, it's, it's still yeah it's, it means a lot to a lot of people but you know the writing, the acting, all of that is still it's except- still at that level. Yeah, isn't it? it's exceptional, mm. and it does annoy me when you know genre stuff is overlooked and you know looked down mm. upon, and you know. Do you it- feel that what 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 genre do you think is looked down upon? Kind of sci-fi and fantasy, I think, really? oh, and yeah. superhero films and superhero one, stuff as well. Yeah. There's there's all that thing recently when you had a was it was it Scorsese. Yeah, who was uh, you know having a go at all the MCU movies mm-hmm. and saying, no, oh, yeah, they're, they're just trash, you know, they're mass market nonsense, blah blah blah. And you know, think, and, like, but they been, mean something to people. Yeah, people find people inspiration are, through them. They connect yeah. with the heroes. And, they they shout at the villains. That's yeah. an important thing. And and film and you know music and you know all of it really is entertainment, and it's about mm. being you know thrilled and scared and and made happy and all of that stuff. And I think there's there's myriad ways that that can be done with stuff and like mm. i think it's been really great to see angela bassett be oscar nominated for black Panther yeah because yeah. she's exceptional in the film but it, it, it does sort of annoy me that other great performances in stuff like that is is not seen overlooked. as it's overlooked you know mm. and i kind of think you get you know very serious dramatic stuff like uh you know brendan fraser and the whale for example the piano or the piano, or that's the Revenant, so you know, DiCaprio and the Revenant. I do like that, the piano, actually. That's, that's, that's my my go to <laughs> serious role. But you know, <laughs> there's there's nothing, you know, it's it's a different sort of slightly lighter, you know, acting that you get in, mm. you know, fantasy and sci fi and stuff like that. But but I don't think it's any less than, you know, like the piano or something like that. It's just different, do you know what I mean? But it's always yeah. looked down on. Like my my bugbear is that none. Oh, we set him off now. Yeah. <laughs> Get, get your cup of tea and Lisa. All right. Sorry, Jeff. You know, I've got I've got a tea and a coffee. Yeah. Well, you, you're <laughs> going to need them. But, you know, like no one in the um in in Avatar was nominated at any Uh-oh. of those dues, and I There's no just hopes now. Just because it's it's digital, it's it's still acted by people, and I get you know mm. I think it's I think it's wrong when there's still a lot of love and craftsmanship that's gone yeah, into as, as making that. Yeah, but well, that's you what know, I was going to say. Digital when, or physical, yeah. there's still that skill. 
and, and, and when, the teams of people involved. And when films like that or Top Gun or, you know, any, anything in that kind of, you know, genre, sci-fi, fantasy type stuff is ignored in, you know, makeup and, and costume and mm. production design. Because actually, I, I think that kind of stuff is a, a much harder challenge in, in like production design work to, to do, to create something completely you know from scratch that's not based on the real world and so yeah that's kind of yeah I, I get a bit annoyed when stuff that, that we like is you know like like my wife said oh, Doctor Who's just a load of nonsense running around <laughs> spaceships isn't it and I was like but that's just kind of like you like you said Lisa you've been watching Buffy and they mm. used to say what what's the uh what's the drama or the, the problem for a, each character each week and, and figure that out and then what, what's the window dressing? What's the monster? How do we make it cooler? What does the monster represent? You know, and it was always based on, you know, the, the characters and what they were doing. And, mm. and, you know, I think like we've talked about this before, Paul, but there's a reason why films like Transformers, I mean, it, you know, it's very surface level and it's fun, you know, watching robots fight is great, but I, I don't care about any of the characters and stuff like that. I don't know them. There's no kind of connection to them, but that's why I think things like, you know the the Marvel films, like Paul said. You know people can identify with it and connect with it, and you know there's there's more going on than just stuff blowing up. And I think it mm. does it all a a disservice when people like Scorsese say they're just like theme park rides. I think it's it's film snobbery mm. at its worst. Film snob should be. I like watching the IMAX. I can't accept anything smaller than that. That's. <laughs> That's you, my you, film you, snob. See, this is it because you are a bit of a snob. When I, it I am a film like snob that. for the screen size, yeah. <laughs> but, okay, but but bring it, bring it, bring it back to. It. I, sorry, sorry, we triggered that yeah, conversation. Sorry, yeah. because you mentioned in, um, the Fifth Element because the Fifth Element is one of those films that is on on a surface level complete and utter nonsense. Yeah, and yet I like. I mean, I I love it. I love it a lot. I you know it's because of its got uniqueness, great visual, its yeah, craziness, its sci finess its yeah. fantasy, and just you know, Luke Besson is just a, an amazing director, anyway, mm. and just yeah, it's, it's Bruce Willis in that as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, he is, yeah, yeah. So, which is yeah. bizarre. He, the, the fact you've got Bruce Willis in there, but he's great in it, you know. Yeah. And it's, anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've always been drawn to to visual mm. um, TV shows, you know, lights, colors, things like that. That seems to really draw me in. Also, mm. things that you can watch again mm. and you mm. didn't see. Like the fifth element yeah, is a great yeah. example of you watch yeah. it a second time As and you layers. see 20 things that you didn't see before. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I love that. Yeah, that's it all is. Yeah. Te- attention to detail. Yeah, it is. Yeah, uh, it's brilliant. Yeah, I, I, I saw this, sorry, Paul, I saw this thing sorry? the other day. Uh, I think it was on Twitter, but someone had shared a little bit from Titanic and there's a conversation between the. Mm. The, the captain and and another guy who's saying you know you need to to make the ship go faster so we can beat the record. We need to watch out for those icebergs, mate. Yeah, <laughs> and th- this conversation was reported by a survivor from from the accident lady, and in the background of this shot in the film with the t- with the captain and the guy talking, there's a woman drinking tea and she she briefly looks over as they're saying these lines, and that's obviously. It meant to be this woman who you know reported this conversation and it's been kind of built into the film oh, I see. Yeah. that tiny little background action of this woman looking over at the right time i was like yeah mm. that's why that's why cameron's the best <laughs> but anyway i digress <laughs> so sometimes um, they're the best things in acting you know yeah. you, you might have the biggest monologue mm. um in the scene but if someone comes in with like the best little reaction yeah you're going to remember that part yeah. of it it's, and, um... and it's what well, is you're right and it's like on songs you know like a song can be really good and then you just get like yeah. a little woohoo or something at the right yeah, point yeah, yeah. and it and it lifts it up and i remember there was um in almost famous the cameron crow film they're talking about you know i can't remember what song it was but you know it has a little thing in it like a bit of vocal or something like that and it the guy says that's what takes it into greatness you know, mm. and, and like I love those little bit. You know, like someone will go, "Hey," in a song. Or, do you know what I mean? It's just a little thing, that it just a bit of fun that kind of lifts something up a little bit. Yeah. You know, so I always like listening out for stuff like that. So, um, so here's a question, right? So I'm just going to throw this one in there. It's, it's kind of to both of you actually, because Jeff, oh, okay. you're you, you are a director, you work with actors. Lisa, you are an actor, you work with directors, mm. yeah. right? So, what 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 do you prefer? Do you prefer the kind of, um, you know, people to be or, or your characters when they're being acted to be more naturalistic, more 
you know, more recognisable human? Or do you prefer this sort of the veering towards fantasy to to go like a little bit OTT to maybe dive into something a bit more melodramatic? What do you think? Mm. I'll you let you go, go first, first, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's all. It's not a trick question. It's. <laughs> um, I would say it's just a, it's all to do with the context in which mm. you're acting in. You know, it depends what show you're acting in. If you were yeah. to go into something like, I don't know, Happy Valley, that's what it's called, isn't it? Happy Valley, yeah. and be this very like dramatic character. Yeah. You're gonna be like that person is a terrible actor. It doesn't yeah, fit in with that. It doesn't. Yeah. But if you was gonna be in, say, a, a dramatic show like I'm trying to think, maybe one of these Marvel films mm. where they're all, you know, very theatrical. Mm. If you was a very small character and yeah. the people say that doesn't fit in, yeah, so it, yeah. it just it depends what context. Yeah. I, but I, personally, I I do like the naturalistic roles. Mm, right. Um, you yeah. know. I feel like I sit better there, but you know. When I come out of hibernation, maybe I'll... Yeah, who knows, yeah. Bring mm. the um, drama. <laughs> indeed, yeah. We all but, love, love a bit of drama. Yeah, I, I drama. Do agree, you know, depending on what you're watching, there's different mm. kind of styles to approach it. I think a big thing for me is kind of... I like a... This this doesn't sound quite right necessarily, but a sense of fun in things, mm. mm-hmm. and, and by which I mean, if you're watching a, a you know heavy drama, of course it's not going to be fun, but there needs to be a spark. I suppose that's a better phrase, a spark behind the, you know, the performance and the people. So I watched something on Netflix last night. And I'd seen the trailer for it and I thought, oh, that looks great. Uh, and I watched it, it was called Lockwood & Co. And I watched it and I was like, God, this is not working for me because yeah. they're ghost hunting, but it's really dry and it's and it's uh, quite, okay. quite dull in, mm. in the performances. And there was lines in it and I was like, why is that delivered so flatly? And kind of deadpan and and i was like this needs a bit of a spark to it for me and, mm. and, I'll, and I'll watch another one and I'll, and I'll see if it kind of clicks you know but that's that's kind of do you know what i mean i, I like personality and i like a you know a, a bit of oomph behind the mm. performance mm. and it doesn't really matter what it's in you know um and, and that's why i think people like you know robert danny jr uh, uh successful and popular because there's so much life in in the performances, mm-hmm. you know. I, I yeah, because I mean, well, Tony Stark is quite a melodramatic character. He's mm. he, he's a dramatic character. He loves the drama, mm. but it's built into the character, and he keep, he still keeps grounded. So actually, yeah. you're right. He's got that thing where he can do both of those in the same mm. in the same performance. Yeah. Sorry, we're, we're going yeah. way off, off, off now. Aren't we we're talking about <laughs> Marvel <laughs> stuff. No, I'm I'm enjoying it. Well, I, but yeah, we but we, sh- we should talk about you. Uh, Indeed. Well, actually, uh, let's go on to how you started acting, mm. Lisa. You know, what, since we're uh, yeah, what there's a segue. Your love. We can do yeah. that. <laughs> Where did well, it all before begin? we uh, before we go on, can I just double check my Hobbit feet are not in shot? Go for it. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're... yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, they're not in shot, are they? They're not in shot. No, oh, good, no. Good. I thought sorry. I thought you meant not um, not in shock or something. <laughs> they might be. I thought it was a thing you had to do. No, my, I don't want to subject anyone to my feet. I've not got any socks on. Um, how did I start acting? Mm. So I think I was about 16 and a friend of mine started attending like a local youth group Ooh, okay. where they yeah. sung, they danced and mm. they acted. Um, and I was quite talented at da- uh, dance and I was quite talented at acting. But yeah. I used to mime in the back of singing. <laughs> so it's not <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> that's not my strong point. Yeah. I love to sing in the shower, but I don't think I'm gonna get cast in any music or anytime soon. You um, never know. No, I hugely, hugely doubt it. Oh, really? Um <laughs> yeah, terrible. <laughs> I can hold a tune, a, a tune, but just one yeah. note at a time. <laughs> okay, that, that's <laughs> technically that's not a tune, but you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So maybe I can't even hold a tune. Um, but I remember, oh my gosh, I can't, I got spotted. So we did a mm. um, a show, I think it was either Bugs Malone or something like that. And okay. there was someone in the audience that pulled me out to do an advert, which was the the drugs advert. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. And then the Sony advert. And then from there, mm. I took a break, really. Um, and the next time I decided to do some acting was when I was, hitting early 20s right so mm. I just left college and I had no credits behind me to be honest but I started writing out to all the agents and I got nothing back 
So then I decided that I would be a car, a casting, um, not casting, a agent. Okay. I'm waffling. Yeah. I'm waffling, right? That's but right, I go, go to them. And I'm like, <laughs> I said to them, if I can't be an actor, give mm. me a chance as an agent. Mm. Um, so I got an interview to be an agent, and the same day uh, at the meeting, the guy pulled me out and said, "I don't think you'd be an agent. I think you'd be an actor." So mm. I ended up getting what I needed by going in the, the other end way. by Brilliant. going the other way around, um, <laughs> and that started my kind of auditioning and road into acting. Right. But it was so funny. Like I think that's why you just can't dwell on closed doors. Yeah. Um, because if it's right for you, it will come back to you. Um, and I think that's like a working class attribute as well. Like growing up, mm. you didn't really get anything given to you. So if you couldn't get you through the front door, mm. yeah, or try and try sneak the through the back door. door. Try to <laughs> door. Yeah, yeah. So try the windows, put a brick through them. If yeah, you yeah. Keep yeah. <laughs> yeah. the door in. Yeah. You know? so, no, I'm joking. <laughs> I think um, you're right, though. You, you have to... You have to be you driven, know, don't you? Yeah, you, you do really pursue, pursue any opportunity. Mm. And, you know, if, if you can't get you know those breaks you know or can you make them yourself you know and, yeah. and let things go from there you know, whether it's make your own film or you know whatever so the way you kind of approach things I think was quite a good mm. you know good way to to do it and it worked yeah. out for you and, and, and got you what you needed because you know life has a funny way of, of working out like that sometimes isn't it you know um it was a very um flip attitude of going about things yeah. you know yeah. as I've got older and wiser I'm not sure I would do things that way anymore. Um, mm. But, you know, I was very young at the time. Nothing yeah. to lose. Well, the, you know, yeah, that's the thing. As, as, going yeah. in life. as you get older, um, you know, and, and you, you know, you've got a mortgage or kids or something like that, mm. you know, it, it can be harder to kind of take those big chances, you know. Oh, and, of course, and, you know, yeah. Go for it, you know, because I know people who are, they'd love to be photographers or, you know, whatever it might be. But they they can't quit the the job and go into mm. doing something that initially won't earn them any money, you know. And, yeah. And so yeah, you you can you can still do it when you're older, of course. You know, you got you got to be really ballsy, <laughs> you know, to go for it like that. I think. But you know, when yeah, yeah when you're a bit, you never younger, say never, Jeff. Well, never say never. And I was going to say, mm. when you're a bit younger, you, you can afford to take those risks a bit more. Mm. Uh, but when you get older, maybe you have to be a little bit more careful about it. I mean, like for me, you know, I worked at Sainsbury's at the petrol station and I kept getting filming work. And then, you know, it was my mum. She said, well, you know, maybe you need to, to try it for six months to, you know, stick it to Sainsbury's and, and try it for six months. And if it doesn't work, then you can get another job somewhere, but you'll always regret it if you don't try mm. it. So yeah. I, I told Sainsbury's, you know, I'm I'm out of here. And I gave it six months and I thought, oh, you know, it's been okay. Try another six months and then tried another six months. And after that year and a half, I was like, well, maybe I don't need to be keep trying every six months, you know, and, and I, you know, just built up slowly, you know, over time. And yeah. you know, if, if I hadn't done it, I'd have always regretted it. So, you know. Yeah, but the industry in general is a hard industry to be in. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. there's not a lot of opportunities. Um you know, I've been very lucky with the work that I've got and, and the jobs that I've done. But I do think there needs to be more opportunity for older people. You know, yeah. there are there are some opportunities here and there, especially on um, the BBC website. They do come out with things that uh, older people can go, you know, like writing camps and yeah, things yeah, like that. Yeah. But it does annoy me when I see things like, you know, you have to be 16 to 24. Mm. Why? Do you what, have to yeah, be 16 why, to 24 yeah. you know let's yeah. open it up a bit more yeah. so hopefully change will come i've seen a lot of change mm. um more opportunities are coming through um but you're so right it is you know scary to take risks especially when you have mortgages and things like that so it is a tricky situation to be in um yeah i'd have to come back to you on how to kind of <laughs> find a solution for that one but that's everyone's problem really in, in terms that's of what i was going to say like, mm. yeah you know a Every lot of people come if they've come from working class backgrounds mm. you might have to get a side job you know it's not all glamour tv and film work uh, sorry i just what muted my noise? mic is that, is that you jeff yeah it's the answer phone at the office i just muted the mic but it, <laughs> so it, it, unprofessional. it didn't work <laughs> yeah you know you, you know i've i've known a number <laughs> of actors who have you know side jobs and things to oh, yeah. know, keep the income going and you know, there's no shame in that at all. You know, but there's no it's... shame. I don't know why people don't talk about it more. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, I've I've had side jobs my whole life, mm. right? Because even when I was working on in big TV shows, mm. I'd always have that obviously this perfectionism and always thinking seventeen steps ahead. Like once that finished, what would happen next? Well, yeah, you know. Next, so yeah. um, I've always had side jobs. That the the trick is to get a side job you enjoy. Yeah, and yes. that might be difficult, yeah. but you know, if you're interested in photography or mm. casting, I think an actor can open their um there what's the word well, well, I think they're, they're repertoire they're, they're range yeah. They're, uh, yeah. 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 by um you know <laughs> it began if, with an r yeah you it know if, if you can r. if you can present as well then that gives you more options and if you could you know uh, live host events then then there's that option yeah. so do you know what i mean so like the more uh, uh avenues you can go down related mm. to the acting i think the greater the chance you've got of, of working more you know yeah it's i mean act, and an agent said to me a few years, many years ago, that if you talk about doing other mm. things, you're not seen as a professional actor. And I hated that. Yeah, I'm not And I sure remember that, that yeah. sat with me. No, mm. I remember it sat with me and I thought, that's, I don't think that's right. You know, because like you said, as you go on in life, say if you've learned directing skills and casting skills yeah. and things like that, one door will eventually open. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it might not be the door that you originally thought you was going to go down that it might lead you back to it, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I've... Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I've got a cough. <laughs> no, no, right, edit that. That's a bit, a bit of a frog in me throat going on there, you know, it just uh, it just came there. I was going to say, in my day mm-hmm. job, I've um, I've, I've employed a, a, a quite a few free, um, actors, like, um, to do what, which may sound weird, mystery shopping, where they go into a shop, yeah. pretend to be a customer, yeah. evaluate certain things that being asked to yeah. look at, have a conversation, remember it, record it, whatever, and then write reports on it and stuff like that. And you think, well, that, that, that's pretty dope. I mean, it's not for everybody, right? But um, one of my recent guys, and I didn't know this, I didn't actually know he was an actor. He just said, oh, I've done loads of mystery shopping before. And he was really, really good at it. And I got him to do quite a few more of them because he's so reliable. And he and I was yeah. having a chat with him, and he said, "It's it's like you're you're being a different personality each time. That's where I get a bit of fun out of it. Mm-hmm. So you know, I'm I'm gonna you know I'll look at the brief, what I need to to go through, and I'm gonna be this person. And he embodies that person, and you know, does all the actually stuff. And he, he said it <laughs> keeps the skills fresh. And it turns out he's um he's been a Cyberman quite a few times, which uh-huh. I didn't realize until. Uh, you know, I saw his Twitter and he's got a picture of himself as a Cyberman. I'm like, dude, is that you? He's like, yeah, I've been a Cyberman. He goes, well, you never, I ne- you, you never told me you're in Doctor Who. He goes, well, I don't tell everybody. I said, you should have told me. He should, that's I'm how he should leave. Doctor Who fan. <laughs> you didn't tell me you were a Cyberman for crying out loud. Honestly, just a just a little story I read it in there, you know. Yeah, there you go. But yes, it, it does because I think also doing different things help must must help you as an actor. Mm. Um, like you said, extend your range, you know, um mm. give you the sort of knowledge you need to think, okay, when I'm acting that scene, it's a bit like when I did that mystery shop or or whatever it is, you know, and I talk to yeah. that person there, it gives you more stuff that you can that you, that can fuel the actually yeah. ability. Surely I would and I think it's in- important to know that you're more than just an actor you yes know? Mm. I think sometimes you like who other in like their jobs get swept up like so if you're an accountant right I'm, I don't know if that accountant would go home and be like accountant <laughs> accountant accountant you probably switch off when you yeah, get home yeah. right mm, yeah. but with acting there seems to be this thing where it's part ah, of your identity yes, yeah um, absolutely yeah, yeah. So absorbing you, the fuel yeah yeah so i think mm. it's good just to remind yourself that you are more than you know yeah. you might be a fantastic mother you might be an amazing chef you know it doesn't have to be things that you're good like not good at because you are a good mother and a good chef but you know other jobs yes you know, just be parts yeah. of your character mm. just to remind yeah. yourself that you're you're more than that's a good just point. Your job. yeah i like yeah. that i think that's a great attitude yeah i, oh. I do like that a lot that that leads quite nicely into this question. So tell us about the positive stories that you've been Ooh. doing on TikTok. Positive stories? Yeah, is that, is that what you've called them? Where oh, you... yeah, I started these positive stories. So I'm just gathering some, some extra knowledge. Um, <laughs> but I just found it interesting reading about people that were not very known mm. and mm. telling their story. Um, that's basically what it's all about. You know, I, I did one about this lady who she ended up saving like thousands of Jewish children right mm. and 
she got tortured and she never like told anyone what was going on and never gave any names and, and stuff like that. And she lived till she was 98 and wow. her story is amazing. Wow. So I thought I'd share kind of positive stories like that on, on TikTok yeah. and because I enjoy it. I enjoy yeah. reading up about history. Well, and... I, th- I think we need, you know, more positive stuff. In Absolutely. The world. Yeah. You know, there's, yeah. there's, there's enough yeah. of the other type of stuff out there. Mm. So, so um, quick, give a plug for your TikTok handle. Oh my gosh, I don't even know the name. <laughs> I, just do, I just do it for fun. Um, he threw that one in there, Lisa, didn't he? Just he, no preparation on that. Just put it straight it, in there. Like, Ninja question. Oh my gosh! Like you can tell, I'm not. I'm just doing it for fun. Do you know what I mean? it's not, um, I'll have to get back to you with the TikTok. We can okay. we can find it. Let us know. Yeah, yeah. Just stick you, it well, you yeah. shared stuff on, on your edit. on your Twitter as well, haven't you? Yeah. 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 Um, so I've got a question from John Cole on Facebook here. Um, okay. Is there any actor that you'd love to work with? Ooh. Ooh, any actor. I mean, Jennifer So we Saunders, talked about the course. doctors, didn't we? Yeah. So yeah, we Jennifer did. Saunders, yeah, yeah. We've done those, with... can't choose them again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Jennifer Saunders. I think mm. she's incredible. Helen the Bottom Carter. I think she's Oh, she's wow, great. yes. Mm. Um, hmm. Who else? I would love to work with Leonardo DiCaprio. Mm. Um, just because I, you know, I know there's a lot in the press at the minute about him, but I do think he's an incredibly talented actor. Yeah. Um, yeah he really is. And I would just love to see how he works. Mm. Um, you know, sometimes the stuff in his private life doesn't seem to be too positive, what goes mm. out. Um, but like I said, I, I think you could just learn a lot from him mm. in terms of his acting. He's, he's brilliant, even yeah, from he is. his he's early good, films. Actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, so those three would be people that I'd love to work with. Mm. Yeah, well, any of those three. Fingers crossed. Well, I'm quite open. I'll work with anyone. Yeah. I'll, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work with anyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, brilliant. What what's next for you then, Lisa? Obviously, you know, getting better, recovering, but you know, is yeah. is that so? I guess for the foreseeable future, you know, the or the immediate future, that that's that's yeah. Course. So it's kind of I think this has been a chapter of my life where I'm really focusing on me and how mm. I look at things in life, and like you say, re- retraining my brain um, to kind of look at things differently. You know, I, I think maybe I'm a positive person, but I was always someone who thought I could do things better. Mm. Um, and I'm enjoying the fact now that I don't have to do that. Do you know what I mean? It yeah. just makes life a lot freer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I've also been writing. Um, mm. I'll maybe submit something to the BBC or Channel 4. Oh, wow. headphone. Oh, hold, hold on. Hold the phone. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I'm back. You're back. Um, so, back yeah, in doing room. a bit of writing. Mm. <laughs> I'm enjoying making TikToks for fun. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe and like you I could, said, my agent. It, you know, I was gonna say maybe you could write a um, big a finish. Short, yeah, big finish short story yeah. for Flip. You know they have the short ones. You know what? Uh, Not a bad narrated. idea. Mm. Yeah. Not a bad idea. Maybe I Definitely could get Johnny that. involved as well. Yeah. Co-write. Yeah, yeah. Um, there you go. You and can yeah, have my that idea. Been... Mm. <laughs> Thank you. There's no story, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can come up with that. <laughs> this, this is why we don't write for big fish. Yeah. We've come up with yeah. ideas, but actually, no yeah. story. Yeah, no, Just... I like that. A short, a short, um, a short version story sounds good. Yeah. Um, and my agent has been, you know, sending me little things here and there, like, do you want to do it? And they do sound fun. Yeah. So it's kind of like retraining again mm. with auditions and and things like that to see yeah. if it's something I still enjoy, still want to do. Um. But yeah, oh, brilliant. Well, keep you us, you know, yeah, keep us posted on everything. Yeah, please do. You know, we we wish you the best of luck with all of it, and Thank definitely, you. you know, can't wait to, you know, see you on screen again and and hear Flip uh, again soon as well. Hopefully, thank um, you very much. So, but before we go, uh, is there anything that you'd like to say to Doctor Who fans and Flip fans? Oh, um, maybe we should come up with a name for seeing. Flip fans. <laughs> Flippers. Flip fans, fans Flippers. of flip. Flippers. Yeah. <laughs> um, Trademark. Thank you, for... <laughs> yeah, you, can, you can have that, but we'll take 50%. That's two things. Yeah. 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 Um, probably just thank you for just always being so kind. Like, I've always been met with such kindness and such warm, you know, whether it's at conventions or online, you know, everyone's just always been so lovely. Um, 
especially over the last two years, like I have really noticed yeah. the amount of people checking in and mm. sending nice warm wishes and, and things like that. So yeah, just thank you for being lovely people. Oh, that's, that's, that's yeah. really nice. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Brilliant stuff. Okay, well, Lisa, listen, um, thank you so much for, for joining us today. And uh, it's been yeah. a real pleasure, real delight. And thank you for yeah. sharing your stories. Yeah, and, that's okay. Uh, We'd love to see Flip again. We'd love to see you in whatever you do next. Yes. So, as yeah. Jeff said, please keep us yeah. keep us well informed. And and thank, thank you so you. much for your time yeah. this morning. It's been and a yeah, really honestly, th thank you for joining us. I know this is the first thing you've done like this in in a while. So. This is this is like the first thing that I've done in like two years. Wow. Um, so yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, we we feel very lucky. Very privileged. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's Lisa sure. Greenwood, everybody. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you very much. Brilliant. Thank you, guys.